Hey you guys, so who taught you to manage your stress? Who helped you build your resiliency? Uh, for many of us, no one. <laughs> or if we were taught, we weren't really explained what we were doing or how it impacted us. And so decades go by and we've just been sort of winging it, not with any real intention, not with any purpose. And most of us, I can say, just expect to be stressed particularly we lived in a, in a stressful environment and you know there's nothing you can do about it wrong there's so much you can do about it so let's talk about it i'm dr nicole peoples board certified physician in internal medicine with a specialty in functional medicine or lifestyle medicine integrative alternative medicine but essentially i help women feel 10 years younger and live 10 years longer by getting to the root cause of their symptoms and balancing their hormones so let's talk about how stress can help your feel your best, age your best, etc. So stress <laughs> is inevitable, right? There is going to be stress, and that is not something that we're gonna get away from. The question is, is how our bodies respond to stress, and not just what you think up here, but what the chemicals and the hormones are doing in your body when something stressful happens. So if you haven't been trained or you haven't learned any techniques to manage your stress, what typically happens is that the chemicals and the hormones in your body rise whenever a stressful situation comes about. And that hormone that is most prevalent um, when you're under stress is called cortisol. And cortisol is a very normal hormone. It should rise when you're under stress. But the problem with many of us is that when we're chronically under stress, our cortisol is chronically elevated. And that causes all kinds of problems. It causes weight gain. It causes brain fog. It causes mental um, uh, um, cognitive or mental diseases, psychological diseases, but also physical diseases like diabetes, high blood pressure, heart disease, right? So we've all heard the people who have heart attacks when they are under a stressful situation. Um, and this is because of the chemicals that get released under stress. So the question is, is can you control those chemicals that are being released? And the answer to that is on large part, yes. You have a lot um, of input on whether or not these hormones are chronically elevated. And so to help balance those hormones, it does require some effort, some training, some skills, some techniques on our part. So let's talk about a couple of the techniques that may be helpful to help you balance your, what we call autonomic nervous system. And essentially what we're doing is we're taking you out of the fight or flight cortisol heavy state, which we call the sympathetic nervous system, and we're shifting you into the parasympathetic state. That is your rest and digest system. Um, and that system is where we should live most of the time. And then we only need our cortisol when we need it, and it turns off when we don't need it. So what are some techniques that help to shift you that autonomic nervous system? So there are things that you've probably heard of, things like breath work or meditation or being around people you love, laughing, taking walks, being in nature. All of these sorts of things can be very helpful in putting your body into a parasympathetic state or a calm, relaxed state where your body is not constantly pushing out more and more cortisol, more and more norepinephrine and epinephrine and all of these chemicals that can eventually, if unaddressed, can cause damage. So there are some very simple techniques and I'm just gonna share with you some of the ones that really work for me and my clients. And it's always different for different people. Some people really you know, gravitate to one versus the other. Um, and I will even tell you, for me, um, meditation didn't work for me for a, long, for a really long time. Um, and then when I finally found a technique that worked for me, it stuck and it's been my go-to. Um, for a really long time. My first go-to and the one I wanna share with you guys today is breath work. The breath is an amazing tool. We all have it, it's free. We don't have to pay anything to, ha to access it, but it has profound effects on our biochemistry. So simply taking a deep breath 
actually moves a big muscle in your belly called your diaphragm. That diaphragm is connected to a very important nerve called your vagus nerve. And whenever you stretch that vagus nerve, it actually sends you into rest and digest. This is why people tell you to take a deep breath whenever you're upset, because it actually stimulates that parasympathetic nervous system that I was referring to. So breath work is very powerful, not just because I said it is, it's because chemically it has impact. So what would a stress reducing breath look like, right? Because we can breathe in a way that causes more you know, agitation, right? So hyperventilating, using our shoulders, having a lot of tension in our muscles, that type of breathing does not help. The type of breathing that we wanna do is the type of breathing that moves our diaphragm. So to do that, we wanna take big belly breaths. And so if you're familiar with the practice of yoga or meditation, we talk about belly breaths a lot. And this is where, I get, see if I can stand up a little bit, but where we're using our belly to breathe instead of our chest. So we're expanding our belly, and um, while we're expanding our belly, our diaphragm is going down, and then when we are exhaling, our diaphragm goes back up, and that's like massage. It's massage for our vagus nerve, and that is what helps to calm us. Um, so taking some belly breaths simply, just doing that is enough. Or you can try some variation of a breath work. So you could do what we call box breathing. So box breathing may be taking a breath un, uh, in a four count, holding your breath in for four, then breathing out for four seconds, and then holding it out for four seconds, and then doing that cycle over and over again. Let's try it together. So we're gonna take a deep breath in, hold, breathe out, Hold. Simple, right? So this is a technique that when used in the moment can actually calm you. So if you feel like your heart's racing, you feel like you're getting anxious, you feel those muscles tensing, you may want to at that moment shift you, shift your breathing and that will shift your cortisol levels, your norepinephrine and your stress levels, okay? So it seems like something very simple but we're actually changing things in our body. Um, so this is a simple technique that you can use um, acutely. But one of the things that I find to be really important is consistency. So if you find a rhythm or a routine in which you incorporate breathing techniques into your day, it, you're less likely to be triggered um, and you're less likely to spark your sympathetic nervous system and go into fight or flight just because somebody stepped on your shoe or whatever it is that would normally throw you off that you don't respond the same way. Now you can still address people and say, hey, don't step on my shoe, but you're not having that same sort of um, uh, biological response where your cortisol is spiking, your heart is racing, your muscles are tensing, right? So same experience, Somebody stepped on your shoe, I'd be upset as well, but I'm not gonna let that, that change my biology in any way because I have trained my body to stay calm even in the face of trauma, right? So that these are some really simple techniques that you can use in the moment and you can use to help build resilience over time. Meditation, again, is a really great one. We'll do a whole other video on meditation skills. Um, there are other things that might be really important, particularly if you're dealing with a lot of trauma. So therapy and a lot of the techniques that assist with trauma. So things like tapping or cognitive behavioral therapy. They're outside of my wheelhouse, but finding a great therapist, I think, is essential. I have a therapist. I love my therapist. Um, and so it's great. Um, then there are also pharmaceuticals um, as well as botanicals. And I am not opposed to taking a pharmaceutical for a depression or anxiety. Oftentimes when we are in that fight or flight state, sometimes we need something to help balance us as we're learning the techniques that you know may take some time to develop. So doing your breath work, doing your meditation and finding other strategies to support your mental health and your resiliency some of that takes some time and practice and consistency 
And so if you find yourself needing to be on a pharmaceutical medication to help bridge you until you can get off of it, then so be it. And even if you're unable to get off of your pharmaceutical medication, it doesn't mean that you can't still utilize these techniques to use possibly a lower dose or to supplement your overall treatment plan. So really important to understand that you can merge the best of Eastern and Western medicine, right? And that's why we call it integrated medicine, right? We integrate. So then there are also botanicals. And I, you know, I, I should do another video on botanicals that are really great. But the one that gets talked about a lot are going to be adaptogens. So this is a class of botanicals that are known to help balance what we call the HPA axis or your um, stress response system. And so adaptogens like ashwagandha, reishi mushroom, cordyceps, all of these um, botanicals have been shown to assist in balancing your nervous system. So these are just a couple of things to start thinking about. I'll do some more specific um, videos in the future about resiliency and resilient life, but I hope this is a good place to start and I will see you guys in the next video.